Discord. Okay. Now let's get to whoop, unbalanced. If you look here, we now have 22 amps for our load one, and we have six amps for our load two. Going back to that question of which direction then is the current going to be flowing? Z to Y or Y to Z? Yeah, we're gonna be going this way. Okay. And the reason being is because this number is greater than that number. Meaning that we have to get rid of some current in this circuit. This is why we say the neutral carries the unbalanced uh, current, okay? So if we know that, then we're gonna put a little negative here and we're gonna put a little positive there. And that's gonna be important for you to remember, okay? Direction of flow is very important for you to remember at this point. And there are, yep. That's correct. Yep. So then we've got 16 amps going across this guy. And what we need to find is the volt drop. This is asking us for what is the voltage here and what is the voltage there and what is the neutral current? Well, we already found the neutral current. That's 16 amps. Thank you very much. And now we have to find out what those other volt drops are. The way to go about this is to see that we have two values, 0.5 and 16. So we can find the volt drop that's across the neutral, right? So I'm gonna write that up at the top here. The voltage across the neutral is equal to the current of the neutral multiplied the resistance of the neutral, which is 16 times 0.5 which gives you eight volts. Beauty. We do the same process for the other two resistors. So for R1, voltage of R1 is equal to I of R1 times R1, which is 22 times 0.5, which gives you 11 and a half volts. Yeah, because I math often. It's 11. <laughs> Say and a half so many times. <laughs> 11 volts, thank you. And then we get the uh, six, the R2, I R2 times R2, six times 0.5, three volts. So here we have 11 volts, and on this guy we have three volts. Now what we can do is we'll start with number one, and we will say the E1 minus R, the VR1 minus, because we've got this negative here, V neutral is going to give us the voltage across load one. That's right, because this is a series circuit, okay? So then we take our 120 and we minus 11 and we minus uh, eight, and that gives us what for our voltage? 101. So we have found that our voltage across load one is 101 volts. Now we do the same thing to find the volt drop across load two. Except when we're going this way, we hit a positive sign first. That means we add this volt, uh, rise is now what it's called. 
okay? So we have E2 plus the voltage of the neutral. And then we come around and we have this minus, minus the voltage of R2. And that will give us the voltage across load two. So we go 120 plus eight minus three equals 125 volts. That is how you solve for voltages in an Edison three wire circuit with two loads. Okay. Any questions on how we solve that? No? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate load voltages in an Edison three wire system with four loads. Here is the example that we have. And I want you to solve for the missing uh, values. We don't know the voltage across load one. In fact, we don't know the voltages across any of the loads, but they have given us the currents. All right. So what we need to recognize off the bat is if I have a current here, my load one current is 14 amps. And my load three current is six amps. We have our lovely little node there, right? And because of that, whatever current leaves a node also has to be that current that enters a node. If you flip that phrase on itself. So we have to add 14 and six to get this current value of 20 amps. And you do that for every junction point. Okay, so you come over here, we've got six amps and we come down to load four. There are 16 amps coming down there which means that we have to have some current coming into this junction at 10 amps, okay? Keep going around the outside. We've got 16 amps here. Load two is 12. Oh, 12 and 16. 28 amps, okay. Here, we know we've got 28 and we've got 20. So this will be eight amps going around. And if you look at this point here, note how I left that one to the end. If you look at that point, we've got 14 amps coming in, eight amps coming in, 10 amps leaving and 12 amps leaving. Do those numbers all add up to be the same? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And they should. And if you get numbers that don't add up, then you've done something wrong, okay? Now we've figured out the current values all the way around this circuit. Let's find out what direction of flow, just by looking at the arrows that we've made, uh, where we're gonna put our negatives and positives. Starting with R1, we've got a negative here and a positive there. And then we've still got that same direction of flow, negative, positive. We come around to the neutral this is going to be a positive and a negative, right? Because we're flowing from Y to X. If I drop down to R4, we'll have a negative here and a positive there. R3, negative here, positive there. 
And then the last neutral here, we've got negative here and positive there. Does that make sense on how you label your negatives and positives? Any questions on that? Okay. Now that we've got our negatives and positives all labeled up, what we can do is find out the volt drops across each one of these resistors. Okay. So the volt drop across R1 is going to be equal to the current of R1 multiplied by R1. 20 amps times 0 0.1 ohms gives us 2 volts. Right? Get our lovely 2 volts. So what I'm going to ask you to do is take the next minute and find all the volt drops across the resistors. And then report back to me what all those volt drops are. Thirty more seconds. I can see some of you feverishly working, so I will wait until I see the fever stop. Okay, so what did we find for the volt drop across R2? What was that? 1.2 volts. Does everyone agree with 1.2 volts for R2? Okay, Justin, what was the volt drop across R3? Two point eight volts. 2.8 volts. Everyone agree with that? R3. <laughs> I agree with that. That looks good to me. <laughs> um, okay. Bryce, what about R4? 3.2. 3.2. Volts. Okay, Brock. Did you get V of the neutral, the first one? Uh, 0 0.08. 0 0.08 volts. Okay. Is that what it is? 0 0.8. 0 0.8. That 
sounds a little bit better. Okay, and then Travis, last neutral, what'd you get? Nope, okay. Trevor? Two. Two. Everyone agree with that? Okay, now that we have all of our volt drops, we can go over here and say the voltage across load one is going to be equal to E1 minus, got our lovely minus there, the voltage of R1, and then we come around, whoop, and we add, because we hit that positive first, the voltage of Rn1, which is going to equal 120, minusing 2 volts plus 0 0.8 volts. What would that give us? One eighteen point eight volts. Beautiful. Everyone agree with that? Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for load two. E two minus, because we've got the minus first, right? V N two or N one, sorry. And we come around this circuit and we see we hit the minus again. So we're gonna change this to a minus V R three. Which will give us 120 minus, remember we hit that minus sign first, that's why we're minusing the neutral. 0 0.8 minus 2.8 volts. What does that give us? One sixteen point four volts. Now what we have to recognize is that our voltage or our E voltage that we're going to use, so this will be L3, let's look for L3, is actually going to be the voltage of L1. Note points R and Y are in parallel with that circuit, right? This series circuit. So this now becomes our source voltage or the voltage that's going to supply the next part of the circuit. Okay, so let's look at what we have here. We've got uh, V1 and we come across a minus first, so we're going to minus VR2, and we go all the way around and we hit this positive plus VRN2, which will be 118.8. What the? Minus. Whoa, my pencil's like wigging out on me. My screen just like copped out, so I don't see the other values. Uh, VR2, 1.2 minus 1.2 plus 2. So what do we get for voltage of load 3? 119. 
Okay, 119.6 volts. Does everyone see how we got that? Okay. We're gonna do it again. Similar process for load four. So voltage of load four is gonna equal the voltage of load two, this guy. We're gonna go around this way. We hit our minus first, minus. Oh, that's, oops, get my number square. Minus two volts. And then we will minus R4, right? 3.2. <clears throat> this guy will be our 116.4. Okay, 111.2 volts. Although the process is long to get here, this is how you solve for the volt drops across each of these loads. Not always. Okay. Any questions? All right. Let's do another quick example. 